Hi guys, for anybody who doesn't know me, this is Chris from Sailing Brittany, and in this video I'm going to share with you how I've been doing my passage planning recently. I've just sailed across the English Channel on my own and I'm working my way along the French coast and I shall hopefully be in Belgium tomorrow. This is a very challenging place to sail, there are big tides, very strong currents and the weather, it's October too. So the weather is uh, really quite temperamental. So there's a lot to think about. The actual process that I use is really quite simple, but it has been taking me a long time because, well, you'll see in a minute in the video, but I, I tend to go into quite a bit of detail and that takes time now, but it helps me out on the actual sail itself. And especially because I'm on my own, things like planning the mooring and things like that, I can actually start to do that now before I even leave. And that really kind of helps me to organize myself and try and give myself the best chance of success. So, let's crack on. Tools of the trade. First of all, I've got mobile internet here. This is a fast mobile internet. It's, uh, it works across Europe and it is extremely, extremely valuable for me. So that's the first thing. The next thing is a mobile phone for getting weather forecasts and things like that. I also recently have bought a tablet. It's a cheap tablet, about £150 from Argos, a Samsung Galaxy. I'll leave some more information in the description below. I put a shockproof cover on it which is quite grippy and I also applied an anti-glare screen which I got on eBay which is nice and cheap but it just takes that awful shine off this that it had when it was out of the box. I did initially look at setting up OpenCPN on this and the program is on there but having been a previous user of Navionics I found it to be extremely intuitive so although I've got the open CPN kind of on the go I've never actually used it yet in real life so that's it's on there I could use it in the future it's got some useful features but for now I'm just using Navionics to use Navionics you can it's a free app and you get kind of a base map I think they give you about a two-week trial to try it out and see if you like it and then after that you buy different chart areas I put the charts for this area and that means that when I'm offline, I've still got the charts that I need. So let's kind of break this down into steps. First of all, I'm going to have a quick look and see where I want to go from and to and see how far that is because that kind of determines everything else. So just to give us a quick idea, what I'm going to do is just quickly go root automatic. I'm going to click on my position here and then I'm going to move over to where I want to go, which is Newport. Newport, there we go and I know from previous research the visitor berths are here. So I'm going to click on there. So Navionics is doing its stuff now. It's, it's working out an automatic route for me. This just gives us some basic information to start us working with. So it is 18.6 nautical miles. These are preset things that I've entered with the boat speed and everything you can put in your own boat's speed and fuel consumption in there. My passage planning speed that I work from is four knots. The reason for that is I may go a little bit faster, I might not. It depends on conditions and it's uh, it's easier to slow down than it is to speed up. So if I'm not sticking to my plan because I'm going too quickly I can just slow down. Whereas if I had used six knots as my passage planning speed and I can't make that speed for whatever reason it starts to get stressful because you can't keep up to uh, to your plan so I'd rather under promise and over deliver if you know what I mean so there we go that's just given us a quick bit of information so we've got roughly five hours ish of passage time to look at so what I'm going to do next is look at the weather I'm looking at doing this passage tomorrow but if the weather isn't good then I may have to rethink that so let's have a quick look at the weather now and see what's happening windy this is a free app, very useful. Let's look at our area of interest. I'm currently in Dunkirk. I've sailed over from the UK from over there. And I am going to 
Newport. So this is our area of interest here. Okay, so you can put on different things here. Let's look at the wind to start off with. So we've got around about, well, if we click on the, if we move that there. Let's stand by, when are, we, when are we at now? It's Monday night. If I press play, it goes forward. Okay, so the wind drops tomorrow, 10 knots, but it's in a good direction. Okay, 10 knots-ish throughout the day. We'll have a quick look at the waves. So we need to pay attention to Tuesday, that's tomorrow. Okay, so less than a metre, that's superb. So the wind and the waves are good. And also the tide here, when it's strongest, goes that way and this way. And with the, the wind blowing across it like that, that's really good news as well because when you get wind blowing in the opposite direction to the tide, then you get really sharp choppy waves that may be a lot higher than the forecast waves here. But in this case, that shouldn't happen. So that's really, really nice. That makes things very easy for us. As I just mentioned, I kind of know already how the tides work in this area, but let's just have a look at that because that is important for us to determine our departure time. Especially on a, a longer passage, you may have several tides to think about, which is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. And when I've been doing the, the longer passages recently, I've had a lot of other things to think about as well. Over here, when I was crossing the English Channel, there's a traffic separation scheme. This here, which is it's basically a motorway for ships and, and vessels um, and there are particular ways you have to cross that and you have to keep your wits about you because it can be potentially very dangerous but we're not covering that in this video because I'm just doing a normal passage plan which in this case doesn't enter a TSS and by the way I've seen other sailing channels sailing through TSS's not following the rules whatsoever if you're going to go through a TSS have a look at the rules and make sure you follow them because it is important by not following the rules you could cause a very serious accident for a start and also they are monitored people do get fined for not sticking to the rules so I do recommend that if you're going to cross a TSS read up on them and do it properly. Let's have a look. We're going to be coming out of here. We're going to be going along the coast here. Now, I'm, I am actually going to pick my own route. This is an avionics automatically selected route. I'm going to look at this myself and pick my own route, but this is just a nice rough idea for us. So now we want to look at the tide. Let's have a look at this. This is almost like a tidal diamond, really, but it's very, very user friendly because it's got all the information right here at our fingertips. So right now, if we were to go that way, we'd have a 1.2 knot current against us. So if we look at the times and the direction and speed, we can see that at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, we've got a 1.9 knot current helping us go in the direction we want to go. But I've had a very busy few days and I'm not gonna be, I've only just arrived tonight, I'm not gonna be leaving again in a few hours, so that's not an option. So tomorrow morning, against us, against us, against us. We're looking at the times here that we might consider to go and in this case, because it's a short passage, we may be able to have a favourable tide almost the whole way. That's not always going to be possible. For example, if you were going this way for seven or eight hours, then you might set off about kind of here when you've got a small current going against you and then you get the entire good current. And then you might have a little bit of foul current at the end as well. But 
you know, you try and pick as much of a favourable current as you possibly can. So let's say I was to leave tomorrow at about 10 o'clock. One knot against me. But by the time I get out of this port and into the channel, it's probably going to be just about going away. And we can, you know, you can look into that in more detail. This is just me kind of uh, briefly surmising what I'm doing here. So yeah, we're going to have a favourable current then. Favourable all the way to six o'clock. So by that time, we should have arrived. Now, that's not the only tidal thing we have to look at. There are different ones and they can be different. Even if they're close to each other, they can be quite different between each other. So you need to basically work out where you're going to be and your passage plan will tell you this, where you're going to be. You kind of get your waypoint, you know how, how far away that is, you know your speed, so you know when you're going to be arriving there and you can work through each tidal diamond um, in turn to make sure that you, you're doing things in a convenient way. There we go, similar story. If I leave at 10, I'll get there maybe half 11, 12, something like that. And I've got a favourable current there too. And then I'll just do that. There we are, we're already there. It's such a short passage that there's only two tidal information things there to look at. So you can work out your departure time looking at the tide. Now that's this is just looking at the tidal direction. You may also have tidal heights to think about. Now it's not a problem for Newport because for our boat and our draft we don't have to worry about it. But there are quite tall tides in this area. So now it's low tide, 0 0.76 metres above Dayton and in six hours 5.62 so there's five meter tidal range there and here it doesn't matter to us because this channel is dredged to around about three meters there's another view here you can have sonar chart which uses information from boats that have passed over there uh, to kind of crowdsource the depth so you can get a little bit more accurate depths with that but yeah we're around three three and a half meters at lowest astronomical tide. So with our draft of 1.65 metres, we don't need to worry about depth here. However, if we were going to somewhere like, I don't know how this is pronounced, Gravelines, Glavelines, I don't know. Here, this is a marina, and to get there, you have to go over a drying area. So if you don't time that right, you literally will just not get in there. You don't have any water there at all on a low tide. In that case, you'd have to look at your departure time and consider the currents, you know, taking you where you want to go. But more importantly, you have to work out if there's a tidal gate which is gonna allow you or stop you from getting into a place like that. Like I said, there's a lot to think about in this part of the world. For me tomorrow, it's a short passage and it's relatively straightforward. This is the simplest one that I'm gonna have done recently. Okay, so that's the tidal considerations. And now what I'm gonna do is go through myself and make up my own manual route through here. Just to, I'm gonna look at the fine detail of any hazards. And you know, there are things that I can think about that the computer might not. Like for example, today I came out of Calais and this was my route here. Now, don't quote me on this, Navionics might have taken me out here through the boys up there that way which would have added quite a bit onto the journey. Alternatively Navionics might have sent me straight over here for example. I don't know to be honest. I don't want to accuse Navionics of of these things. There's a human element here so like for example here we've got a drying height there. I don't really want to be going there because if something happens to my engine when I've got a two knot current going that way like there was today that's not going to put me in a good position. So uh, you know, I gave it a little bit more of a wide berth and then if anything happened I had a little bit more leeway to get an anchor out or do something to, to sort myself out or get the sails up or whatever. So, um, you know, I go through now and do the, the Chris version of that route and I'm going to consider all the different things that there are to consider on the way and I'm going to come up with my own route and my own set of waypoints. So I'm going to do that now and I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, so I've got my manual route planned out there now, which I have chosen. Just to give you another example of the kind of thing you might look out for, out of Calais, over here, you've got Zone de Déposer d'Explosifs. So there's a dumping ground there for munitions. There are lots of Second World War things left over around these areas. You know, there are mine, former mined areas and munitions dumping grounds, etc. So this isn't in itself a problem. But again, you know, if you have a problem and you want to drop your anchor, you don't want to do it there. That would just make a bad situation potentially 20 times worse. 
So, you know, there are lots of different things to consider that, that you as a human being can consider that Navionics just isn't capable of, of computing. So that's why I like to do my own manual route. You can kind of work out your own route, consider all the different variables along the way, and then pick the best route according to uh, your own judgment. And now what I'm going to do is what I did yesterday, just transfer that in my awful handwriting into a plan. And basically what I want to do is copy this information down so I've got the, the true headings to steer and how, you know, the distances and things like that. The point of this is if there's a lightning strike or, I don't know, a meteorite hits and we get a tsunami and all my electronics get wiped out, just whatever. Whatever happens, if something crazy happens and I lose this and I lose my backups, GPS and everything else, I've got something to fall back on. This is enough for me to just hand steer and get to the destination, following buoys and all the rest of it as well, making notes of things that I'm going to see while I'm out there. And this just gives me the information that I need to crack on and, and get to my destination, even if something goes horribly wrong. A passage plan can actually be a legal requirement as well. For example, if you're crossing the English Channel, it is a legal requirement to have a passage plan and you'll never get asked for it. Nobody will ever ask to see it. Nobody will ever try and enforce this unless there's an accident. And if you do have an accident, that's when it becomes a problem. If you have an accident with a ship, the ship is going to have a passage plan. And if you've got one, then legally you're on, you know, you're on good ground. If you don't have a passage plan, then you're already breaking the rules. So you're already at fault before anything else gets taken forward. So it's important to do it. I'm very glad that I've been doing these for the past week because it's kept me out of trouble. It's kept me safe and it's been uh, it's been definitely worth the time and effort that I've been putting into these. I'm going to do this now for my trip tomorrow and then I'm also putting other person information on there such as VHF channels. I keep it on the companionway steps there. When I get to my destination you know I reach in and grab it and I've got the VHF channel there ready for me so I don't have to go into the boat and start hunting around for things when I need to be at the helm. This is basically you're looking after yourself, you're doing yourself a favour and you're putting a little bit of work in beforehand which is then going to save you a lot of hassle further down the line when you need to be doing other things. Another thing that I've been doing is putting in refuges en route. So, you know, if you find anchorages on the way or alternative ports, if you have a problem of some description, or if the weather picks up massively, which wasn't forecast, you've got bolt holes that you can escape to. If you commit into a certain passage, you may have to go back to where you came from, in which case you can kind of write down back bearings and things to get you back home. Uh, you know, if you're doing a night passage or something, it might not necessarily be easy to, to find your way back without that. So it's just doing yourself as many favours as, as you can in a comfortable and calm environment. So I can go through and be very methodical about all this and just get it all down on paper and then I have a plan. You can vary from it, of course, things might change, but you've got a good plan to work from and it will make it easier if you do have a later departure or something it makes it easier to work out how the modified plan is going to work too. So I'll just walk you through every step just to cover everything. The total distance for tomorrow is just 18.4 nautical miles. So 18.4 divided by 4 knots equals 4.6 hours. So 60 times 0.6 equals 36 minutes, 4 hours 36 minutes, more or less. So a nice easy, easy day and what that means is that we've got lots of scope to pick the right tide time. I could leave around about midnight, 1 in the morning, uh, no thanks. So then that's against us, the next window is more or less, it starts to get favourable about half 11 in the morning and because it's only four and a half hours we're going to have a good, 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 helpful tide for the whole journey. So that's really nice. And, you know, that's the same if we look at the other, the other kind of tidal information diamond further on. It's the same story. It's favourable for the entire journey. So now I'm going to start working out my timings for what I'm going to do. So 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to be slipping the lines and getting the engine running and telling Russell I'm leaving and all the rest of it. And then 10.30, I'm going to actually depart. And then I'm going to go through and just put down the times and the bearings for where I'm going to be at what time. And Navionics makes this very simple for me because if I go to the route there, then I'm looking at number three here. I want to know what time I'm going to be leaving the port. And this is, of course, approximate because it depends if you get asked by the, the harbour master to hang around, wait for a ship to go out or whatever. But it does give you an idea of something to work with. So three, 16 minutes. So I can now write down 10.46, exiting 
port. So 1046 exit port, turn starboard. Don't know why I missed the N off there. I'm evidently very tired. Two, and Navionics tells us 068 degrees true. And run for 1.3. 1.3 nautical miles. There we go. And I'm just going to go through that process for each of the waypoints um, so that I know when about I'm going to arrive there. And it's not so much of an issue on a shorter passage like this, but on a longer passage, you can kind of check off if you want to. You can go and check off where you are in real time compared to where you thought you were going to be, and that may lead you then to a, an amended plan or you know it just kind of helps you to stay on top of what's happening in the real world compared to what you plan to happen. Here is my actual passage plan. It's not pretty, um, it's just functional for me and it has to work for your brain, nobody else's really. So uh, this might not be very clear to you but it is to me and that's what really counts. I've got a time to slip the lines, I always faff around, I'm not waiting for other people because I'm, I'm solo sailing at the moment but it does take me a while to get things sorted you know you're messing around with lines here and there and half an hour goes away very easily so I'll leave at 10.30 got the VHF channel there for Dunkirk just as an aid memoir the headings and and distances to run and things of note on the way if there was a munitions dumping ground or something on the way I might stick that on there or any other navigational hazards if there were any dangerous wrecks on my route or anything like that I'd put a note of them in there so that I'd raise the awareness of, of, of those things and then when I get to the other end I've got the VHF channel for where I'm going. Been online, I looked at the satellite and stuff in the website, so I know that the visitors' pontoons are on A and B. I can, if I want to, I can get a head start looking at the weather forecast. I can actually plan my manoeuvres when I get there. And again, this is just because I'm solo, you know, if, you, if you've got crew, this is a bit easier, but for me, I like to try and prepare myself in advance. So if you know the wind is coming from this direction, you can kind of work out which side you're going to go to, where you're going to put your fenders, where you're going to put your, your lines or your spring line, whatever you want to do. Today, for example, when I was hanging around outside the, the port here waiting for clearance to come in, I looked up at the, the wind direction. Because I'd done my passage plan yesterday, I knew exactly where I was coming to, I knew where the visitor's pontoon was, um, and outside the harbour I knew the wind was coming this way. So I already had in mind the way I was going to moor and then it basically worked out really, really well today. So just thinking ahead, it's just like doing yourself a little favour. It's like giving yourself a little present the day after. So I think this is a very worthwhile thing to do. Before anybody asks or comments, yes, I do have paper charts. I do have a plotter. I've got a hand bearing compass and the boat's compass and I know how to use these things as well. So I'm not utterly relying on electronics, but they do just make life so much easier. I've got an almanac there. For example, I could work out, this is an old one, but it doesn't matter, for example, for the tidal information. The tide times are out of date, but the actual tidal stream atlases, I can still use those. Yeah, these are still relevant, even though this is a couple of years out of date. So I could do this stuff manually. I know how to do it. I have done it in the past, but this for me is just super, super convenient. And it's already doing what I'm doing, sailing around on my own. It's already taxing enough. Anything I can do to make it easier, I'm, I'm gonna take. Sometimes I do use the laptop as well. You know, if I'm doing like detailed planning or looking up the marine information, it's just a bit quicker for me to do that on a, on a laptop as opposed to, to the phone or a tablet. So that's handy. But the main thing is if you've got internet, the world is at your fingertips, isn't it really? So that's a, a huge help for us. Okay, I think that's about covered it. And this works for me. I'm no expert by any means. I'm just kind of bumbling along, but it seems to be working really well for me so far. So um, I thought I'd share it with you in the hope that this could be useful for other people too. There are lots of other things to consider. If you want more videos like this, you know, for example, the English Channel passage plan, that was a bit more complicated. If you want to know more about that, for example, then let me know in a comment and I'll, I'll maybe make some more of these kind of videos. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope this was useful. If you're interested in seeing how this trip has gone so far and how it's going to go tomorrow then check out our other videos keep supporting us on our channel please comments and likes 
they're they're really really helpful for us and we we really get a lot of motivation from that as well and if you really like what we do and you want more from us then you can check out our patreon page we give you tons of extra stuff we give you a lot more of a personal kind of service you know we can actually reply to every single message there we'll always help you out as a patron and you can get involved there for as little as one dollar per month so it really is very affordable we've got digital downloads that can save you thousands it's a great deal just go and check it out and if you like what you see then uh, sign up there and we'll get to know you in the future right thanks again for watching fair winds guys and we'll see you in the next video hopefully rosella and emma will be here because they're much better looking than me okay cheers ciao